Welcome. Welcome to the Elokos podcast. And this is class number five in the Maimer Nasi Yisraish, in the great book, B'Shashah Hegdimu 5672. Um, I'm welcoming myself back. I was traveling for about two weeks, and uh, it's hard to do it when you're on the road. So uh, hopefully we'll have some consistency now and continue with a whole bunch of classes. Be'ezrat Hashem. And these next three classes, this one, the next one, and the following one, that means four, not four, five, six, and seven of the Maimarim Nasi Yisraish were all sponsored by Yehudis Brisky. Thank you so much. May Hashem bless you with all you need and all that you want. Much appreciated. Okay. Um, here we go. So, to pick it right up from class number four, if you don't remember class number four, you can go and listen to it again. Um, I don't want to give a long introduction just because I was um, away because the listenership that has been listening, you listen, you can always listen to class number four so you can make the connection. But the main point that we were learning about is that in this mimer, in Nasa Yisraish, uh, the Rebbe is proving, the Rebbe Rashab is proving, actually it's going to be his birthday uh, this week, so this is extra special to reconnect this week. So in this mimer, he's, he's um, proving to us that the Hagbala, the limitations and the boundaries in the spherot and the attributes are not only in the vessels. Yes, of course, that primarily the vessels, the kalim of Atsilus of the spherois, are the primary reason for limitation for Hagbala, but that's not only related to them, but that the oil, the light, has also the oil of Atsilus although it is a directly, seemingly a direct flow from the Oren Saif, from the infinite light, and therefore it should be a representation and a manifestation of the infinite, and it should be pashut betachlus apshitus, like true infinity is simple with utter simplicity without any design that would thereby limit it and define it. And that's, of course, generally true. However, since and this is the whole idea running through the whole beginning of the Mimer, which we started you know, well, quite a while ago, is that since it's Ur Pnimi, it's not Ur Makif, we're dealing with an Ur that is meant to go into Kalim, it's Ur Pnimi, Pnimi meaning an internalized light, a light that's supposed to get into a vessel. Since it's meant to get into a vessel, um, it is not a pure reflection of Atzmus Mamish, of the essence. The Ur Makif, the encompassing lights, the Keter, that's why the whole Mimer began with Keser, with crown, the levels of Keser, of crown, since they are Makif, is the light is shining from the luminary, from the source, without any modification. The light is just as is, reflecting the source, and those lights are purely Pashut, really, really simple. But Ur Pnimi, but internal light, has some kind of modification from the very get-go, and that's what he's going to be proving, and it's going to take us quite a while to get through this, as he's going to prove this whole idea that we have to say that there is already design and definition in the light as well. Now, earlier in the Mimer, he proved it from various different Kabbalistic sources in which we mention spheroids. Remember, I'm just going to give you a little bit of a ring, a ringer. We mention spheroids attributes in, on levels where there are no vessels. If we are going to claim that the only reason for limitations and boundaries are only from the vessels, it would mean that you can only speak of boundaries and, 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 and definitions. For example, you can only speak of the number of 10 sphero, 10 attributes, only from the place where vessels begin, because then you can blame the vessels. But on a level where there are no vessels, like remember, he spoke about the innermost of the crown, which is called Atik Yom in the ancient of the days, and over there there are no vessels at all, and yet there are ten spheres of Atik. So that tells you that the light itself is slightly slanted. The same is also another proof he gave 
was from a lower level where there was only one of them, and yet there are ten oirais, there are ten spheroids. How can there be ten spheroids in one in one vessel if the vessel is is it should be only one sphere or one attribute? That all points to the idea that there is already colorization, so to speak. There is already a concept of chesed, gavura, teferas, and all the other spheroids, all the other attributes, kindness, severity, and all the other attributes are already um, detectable, so to speak, already, I don't know if detectable, but at least they are already beginning somewhat in the light, even when there is no vessels. Meaning to say the oirais are not pshutim legamri. They're not utterly simple and undefined. Now, the last point that we were making now, and this is where we're going to take off today from, is also he gives a proof to this idea also from logic. And he says like this, since the kalim of Atsilos, the vessels are are mugbal, are limited, if we're going to argue that the light has no definition at all, that means that the lights are purely bligvul. They're really, really in, uh, without a limit. And that would be a problem because how can finite vessels contain limitless light? You cannot have a limit, a limited, a limited entity containing and holding and facilitating an infinite energy. Now, um, the main point of why this is a problem, even though we right now are in 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 um, we are uh, submerged in infinite energy. Because God is everywhere. And God is definitely not limited. Like Hashem is here, Hashem is there, Hashem is truly everywhere, right? Like the song goes. God is everywhere. So we're now submerged in infinite light yet. And yet we don't blow a fuse. The answer to that is, and when we say God is everywhere, we mean not just as limited lights, the limited energy that takes to create us, but God and all of his expansivity and all of his infinity is everywhere. If that's the case, so yet we're... But the difference is, and this is very important to, to note, is that that's not meant to be an orpnimi, which means it's not it's not internalizing in us. God is makif us, he's encompassing us. And therefore, his presence over here, or his infinite light's presence, we're going to see not only is he here, but even his or, the or ain't safe, is also everywhere. And yet, it's not interfering with us, it's not buzzing us, it's not, uh, it's not ruining our experience with his infinity, because it's makif. And things that are makif don't necessarily have to interfere. Because makif meaning encompassing outside of us as if it's outside of us. But an arpanimi means that it, it reveals itself in the vessel. That's what happens with an arpanimi. How can there, and that would be a problem, how can a finite vessel have within it a revelation of an infinite light? The only, and for that, we need, therefore we have we have to say, that the lights that go into the vessels are not truly, truly, truly infinite and limitless. That's where we left off in class number four. And over here we start off and we continue in class number five. Okay. Hine says, give me a second. In another place, we prove from this the hagvul. Let's learn. learn and it, there was a parenthesis. This is again in, in Nasa. There's a, just that we can find the place. There was a parenthesis. Now the parenthesis called imhayos. After the parenthesis begins, it says like this: the im noimar. Just to just to conclude the final point, the im noimar. And if we're going to say shaoyru pchenas beligavul that the light is truly beligavul infinite mamish. How is it possible that it should be enclosed in vessels in an internalized manner? It couldn't happen. Now, but elsewhere they prove from this. So he says, well, actually, speaking to that point, that a finite vessel cannot facilitate and and uh, host an, an infinite light, so, and we're trying to prove from this, and we have to say that the lights are not purely infinite. So he says, well, there are actually arguments meant, stated elsewhere in, in, in mystical writings that try to prove the opposite. That the vessels, again, when we, we have a contradiction between the 
the, we have, the problem we have over here is the mergence of the infinite and the finite. How two opposites can converge together. So the 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 what we try to prove uh, um, the way we try to resolve it is by limiting the infinity by doing by doing what by saying that the lights are not truly infinite. Now elsewhere they try to do the opposite. They prove from this that it this proves that the vessels of Atsilos, the kalim of the world of Atsilos, can't really be finite. Oh, but that goes against the whole idea of vessels. Vessels is all a pop. The whole idea, why do we need vessels? Is to bring gavul, to bring limitation, otherwise to, to the infinite power of God, so that God can create in a limited, finite fashion, a finite, limited universe. So that uh, that requires some limitation. And the limitation, the, and the, the, the orchestrators of the limitation, or the uh, producers of the limitation, is the are the vessels. And now we're arguing. Uh, uh, so how, how can we just say no, no, no? The vessels can't are not are not limited. So therefore, the argument is made that it's not gvul, it's not limited. It's koyach gvul. It's a power to affect finitude, but it itself is is infinite. So what is he referring to? B'mokam achar. Elsewhere it it explains. This is a shita in Kabbalah. Amongst the great Kabbalists, there's actually an argument. Two opinions regarding the spherot and primarily the vessels, the kalim of the spherois. The, the kalim, the vessels of the world of Atsilos. Are they gavul or are they koyach gavul? What's the difference? Are they gavul, meaning there is already a limitation to them? Or are they really, since they're part of Atsilos, which is part of the a world that's still divine, it's unified with God, and therefore, it's still divine. And if it's divine, it's got to be infinite. So then even the vessels of Atsilos are divine. And therefore, they too are infinite. And when we say that there is, but on the other hand, we have to respect the idea that they affect and produce and bring about limitation. That's only that they can affect limitation, but not that they themselves are limited. That's the other opinion that says that the vessels of Ratzilus are only koyach ha-gvul. They're the power of gvul. Who are the arguers? These are the heavy hitters of Kabbalah. The Arizal, the Holy Rabbi Yitzchak Luria, the Ari, versus his predecessor, who was the rabbi, the chief teacher of Kabbalah, the seminator of Kabbalah, and teacher of Kabbalah before him, right before him. The Arizal actually took over his seat as the as the chief Kabbalist of his time. So the, before the Arizal was Ramesha Kurdovo, known as the Ramak. Both of them were teaching Kabbalah in the city of Tzvat. So the Ramak is of the opinion, because of this argument that we just made, that how can it, an infinite light dwell and reveal itself in a limited vessel? So the Ramak makes the argument that the vessels are not limited. They're only koyach ha-gvul, they're only the power of gvul. However, the Arizal argues with him, and the Ari, Arizal is of the opinion that the Kalim of Atsilus have are limp, are really gavul. They are, it's interesting, they're divine and they're gavul. How can they be? We spoke about it in the last class. It's like Hashem becomes something. Although it's him, it's not, as we said, he becomes, and we said he becomes a something, but not a somebody. Well, somebody means already a yesh to feel yourself as something, but something means they have already limited def de defining borders. So yeah, the Arizal says that the vessels of Atzilus, the kalim, are really gavul, and that's the chiddush of Atzilus that Hashem unifies with gavul. The oirais become unified with real gavul. But Ramosha Kardava learns the Ramak no. The kalim are still believable. They're infinite. They're only koyach agvul. They're the power of gvul. So, based on this argument that we're just hearing about now between the Ramak and the Ari, let's go back to when the the we we would then object to the entire notion that he's proving in our in this discourse. The Rebbe Rishab, the author of this discourse, is trying to prove from here that even the lights of Atsilas are not really absolutely um, pashut, 
simple with utter simplicity and utterly completely believable without a limit. Why? Because if they would be really gavul, they couldn't settle into vessels that are limited, right? They couldn't reveal themselves in vessels that are limited because a limited vessel cannot facilitate an infinite energy. So we might say that that makes sense according to the Arizal because the Arizal says that the vessels are really limited. So you have to say that the lights that are going into these vessels can't be utterly infinite because then you would they would clash. The two wouldn't work. The vessels would explode. Right? We would have a it would blow a fuse. However, we might argue that according to the Ramak, Ramosha Kurdovo, and according to him, who says that the vessels are not gvul, they are limitless. They are, they're only koyach They're only a power to affect limitation. But they don't have any limitation in, on their own. Then it would seem that this argument that he's making now is not an argument. Why? Because then we can go back and argue that the lights of Atz, the lights of Atzilis, the lights of the spheres, are utterly believable. They're truly, truly infinite. And the fact that they're going into vessels is not is not reason to prove that they are that these lights are not infinite because the vessels couldn't handle them because the vessels could handle them because the vessels are really infinite again according to the ramak that he raises the vessels up to to being limitless so now it could accommodate the truly undefined lights so if we're again according to the ramak that we're going to pick up the vessels to a higher notch we're going to make the vessels really limitless we can then raise the lights up and make them utterly limitless without a problem. We would That would seem so. So the Rebbe says no. The Rebbe says even according to the Ramak, even according to Ramosha Kurdava, who argues that the vessels are not gvul, they're not limited, they're kayacha gvul, they're a power gvul, even according to him, we still have to limit the lights. And we cannot say that the lights are utterly infinite. Why? Because however, whichever way you're going to cut these vessels, whether they're really gvul, they're really limited, or whether they are kayach a the power of gvul, they are still related to limitation. And if there's enough limitation there that would not allow them to host truly, truly limitless light. Because you have to subscribe or ascribe to the vessels of Atsilas, some element of limitation. And let's see what he says again. So there are those who prove, again, we prove from this that the gvul of the kalim, they're just a power of gvul, loy gvul mamish, not literally gvul. And in what sense do we say that? When the Ramak makes that argument, what's his point? He says, the ime yoisam begeder miyuchot. Even though they are in a specific geder, which means that the vessels definitely have a flavor. Vanilla or chocolate, right? They're already, they have already a slant. In our case, the vessels are kindness and gvura. So they have a geder. When the Ramak says, that they are believable, he means that the, the, the chesed, the kindness in Atsilos itself is infinite. It's infinite kindness. And the gavura and the power of discipline is infinite discipline. Or the power of mercy is infinite mercy. It's not limited. According to the Arizal, we would say that the vessel element of chesed is limited kindness. It's not. It's not infinite kindness. The vessel element of gavura is limited discipline. But according to the Ramak, we would say no. That the vessel of Chesed has, even though it's only the vessel, yet because it's in Atzilus, it's Ein Sof. So it's Ein Sof Chesed without an end Chesed, and an out and end gavura. Mekal Mokam, as he says, ain't soifless pashtusam. There's no end to how, to how far they can spread. 
They have their diffusion of kindness is endless. The confusion, the diffusion of, of compassion is endless. However, the Rebbe says, good, I'll agree to that. Let's let's now let's now hop on to the Ramak's ship and go along, float with the Ramak, and say that the vessels are infinite, infinite kindness, infinite gavura. But even the, the Ramak, even the captain of the ship, the Ramak is gonna is gonna agree with us that that in the Kalim, the Chesed is Chesed and the Gavura is Gavura, which means that the kindness is kindness and discipline. It's a two. It's a this is a, a, a cold energy, let's call it, and this is a a hot energy. Gavura is hot, and this is a, and Chesed is cool. Well, you can sometimes look at it the opposite. Chesed is warm and Gavura is cold. Whichever way, however way we're going to look at Chesed and Gavura, there, there's, there's sometimes there's different ways of looking at it. But whatever that is, it's still too. It has a get there, and that itself is already some somewhat a a a gvul. That that's a limitation. It's a limitation that it's this and not that. And that's enough, as we're going to see later. That's enough for it for us to be able to argue that. That the that the vessels, sorry, that the energy cannot be the ur that goes into the kalim. Just give me one second here. That's enough for us to make the argument that the ur, that the light that's going into the vessels, cannot be pure, pure, pure. Um, undefined and simple with utter simplicity because the fact that they're going into a vessel, yes, true, let the vessel be infinite kindness, but the fact that it's kindness and the, that even the Ramak will agree that the kindness is kindness and that the Gavura is Gavura, the two would not be able to work together. Pure simplicity and undefined energy would not be able to match up with a vessel and reveal itself in a vessel that has definition. That's point number one. Then he's going to argue to point number two. That even, oh, okay, let's get to that in a minute. Hare, but again, he, 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 the, 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 the Rebbe Rashab stands by his, his previous argument that infinite, that the Oirois have to have some slants to them, has to have some definition. They can't be utterly pushed. Why? Hare Shahem Begeder Meyuchud. They still are, the vessels are within a certain geder, which means within a certain context. The chesed, the gevura, al kopanim. Al kopanim means at least that the Ramak agrees that the chesed is chesed and the gevura is gevura. So it has already a, somewhat of a, of a definition. And that will force us that the light that's going into it, although the energy is always more abstract than the, than the vessels, way more abstract, but it can't be absolutely abstract. Because then it wouldn't go into a vessel. Now he's taking it even further. And he says, the Indian Mashem, the Indian Mashem. So what does it mean? So when the so when the Ramak is arguing, when the Ramak argues that there that it's not Gavul, it's it's Koyacha Gavul, what he means is is that the Indian Mashahin Rak Koyacha Gavul, and this that we say that there it's only a power of Gavul of limitation, but not real Gavul. Who lish loyal is to negate sheba atzilus magbilim that in the world of atzilus it's not limiting. What does that mean? When the energy goes, the energy and the it goes into the kalim. When the oirais go into the kalim, and chesed is produced, and energy of chesed is produced in the world of atzilus, it pumps infinite kindness, boundless kindness. And the chesed, the reason he's saying by way of, by way of example is because it, chesed is only one sphere or one attribute. Same would apply to the to the rachamim, to the to the teferis energy, to the to the compassion. That what? Who bepchinas beligavul is in a state of limitlessness in atzilus. nevertheless. But what, what the Ramak agrees, what is without a question, and even the Ramak agrees, there is no question on that, that is that the chesed, 
it has the limitation. The vessels have the element of limitation of kindness. And since they have the limitation of kindness, and when I say the limitation of kindness, we mean chesed is of kindness. And the other attributes are of the other attributes. And if that's the case, if the lights would be utterly infinite, it would not go together. You could not have a shidduch, you could not have a match. Now he says, now he's going to take it even further. Even the Ramak, no, let, let's hand it to the Ramak to, to, and, and agree with him, obviously, that what? Again, okay, we're going we're gonna to side with the Ramak for, for a moment. And we're going to say that these, that in Atsilos there is infinite kindness. The chesed, the, the, the kalim of Atsilos do not limit the kindness. And the kindness is infinite. Because everything in Atsilos is infinite. And the, and, the, and the gavur and the discipline is infinite. And the compassion is infinite. However, even the Ramak agrees that, that these vessels are important because they, even if they're, he calls them kayach ha-gavul. What does kayach ha-gavul mean? They are a power to affect the gavul. They themselves are still limitless, but they affect, they affect limitation. In which sense do they affect limitation? In addition to the fact that, as we spoke now, it's it's already we're already seeing the different colors of the rainbow. Each one is its own color. But there is another point over here. It's also making that further on, it's having an impact that outside of the world of Atsilas, things should be limited. In other words, because these lights, the energies, goes through the vessels, the vessels limit the light that when they travel outside of the world of Atsilas, they should be contained within limitation and that the kindness should be limited kindness. So what does that say, the Rebbe? Because, and that everybody will agree on. Because after everything is said and done, we see that the forces in the universe are finite. And our creation down here, when there is water, there is finite water and there's not infinite water. When there is fire, it's limited fire. It's not infinite fire. Everything in the in the three lower worlds, Bria, Yetzir, and Asir, which is the created realm, all comes with limitation. How does why are things limited? Why not infinite? In Atsilus, everything is infinite. That's because the vessels of Atsilus are have a koach, a magbil. They're the power to limit that when the lights and the energies travel outside of Atsilus and enter into the next worlds, everything should be with limitation. If so. Now here's what the Rebbe says. What does that mean? That means that the limitations cannot, it's not like a suspended effect, that really the energies in Atsilas are purely infinite, and somehow when they exit Atsilas and move into another dimension, they suddenly are limited. There is a, a, a change in there, a radical <laughs> a metamorphosis in them that they become, these very energies become limited energies. That's not what happens. What happens is that in order for it to become limited when it leaves Atsilas, whatever that even means, to go out of Atsilas, right, and, and, and enter into a lower dimension, the fact that they later lose their potency to be infinite is a sign of limitation even in Atsilas. If you are infinitely powerful, truly infinitely powerful in your place, then there, there will never ever be a weakening in your power no matter where it goes. If it goes into a place where eventually it becomes limited, that's a sign that in the source, it also has some limitations. So that's going to be now his next argument. And therefore, he's going to prove that although the Ramak is saying that it's that, that the, 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 the kalim of Atsilos are not gvul really, they're not really limited, they're believable. And how does that manifest in that, that the kindness that's being pumped out over there, the fountain of kindness is pumping limitless kindness, but it's not really, really limitless kindness. Because the fact that when it goes into the lower worlds, it suddenly becomes finite kindness, that's a sign on a certain limitation, even in Atsilas. And that's because 
the kalim are not truly believable. The kalim, even according to the Ramak, according to the Ari, of course they're gavul, because that's what that results. So that's the that the kalim of Atsilus are gavul. And even in Atsilus, there is limitations to the kindness. But according to the Ramak, that the in Atsilus, there's no limitation to the kindness. And only outside of Atsilus there's limitation to the kindness. But even that is an indication that there is a certain um weakening, so to speak, of the energy, even in Atsilus, due to who? Obviously, who's at fault? It's the Kalim. So you see that the Kalim have, have limitation. And if that's the case, we will then bring it back to the argument that we must say that the lights cannot be utterly infinite. Because if the lights would be utterly infinite, they could never reveal themselves in vessels. So according to the Ari, for sure it couldn't reveal themselves in those vessels. But even according to the Ramak, there's two reasons it couldn't, meaning it still could not reveal themselves in those vessels for the two above reasons. Number one, the Ramak agrees that chesed is chesed and gavura is gavura, which means they have certain definitions. And therefore, undefined, a truly undefined energy would not be able to reveal itself in something that has definition. And even more so, even in terms of the qual- quantity of the energy and the quantity of the kalim, which we say they're limitless, eh, it's not really limitless. Because the fact that when this light continues downstream, it gets narrower is a sign that even at the source, it also has some limitation. That's what he's going to prove now. The gam and also since they affect the light, the kishayum shachutzla that when the light will go out of Atzilus, it should be limited. If not for these power in Atzilus, if the light would not be already limiting itself in Atzilus, then, the, then this energy would flow from world to world with all of its infinity, and it would be even outside of Atzilus we would experience infinite kindness and infinite compassion and infinite discipline. The fact that we don't experience it that way, and that's because they are limited, is a sign. So we have to say that we're forced. That in Atzilus as well, they affect some kind of a limitation. And that is. Even though there is no end to their expansive, however, that expansion, which is infinite, should remain only in Atsilus. It will pour out infinite, it will pump infinite kindness. But once it goes out of Atsilus, it should not be that way. And that's a sign that it is already that that the that the Kalim, since they affect limitation. It's because they themselves have a relationship to limitation. And this brings us back to the argument, which we're not going to finish today, that the oil also has to be limited, as we shall be as Hashem see in the next class number six.